So our next section that we're going to do is we are going to learn how to um, edit a drum performance using Elastic Audio. So we've already built um, a drum loop, we've imported a specific loop that already sounded great by itself. We didn't want to alter the loop because it was already a great performance. Now we're going to pull up a, a recorded performance and use Elastic Audio to be able to go through and clean up some of that performance and make it a little bit more polished. Um, make sure the drummer was on a little bit better. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I've pulled up a mix here. Um, I'm just going to play just a little bit of the drums just by themselves. Um, again, I've made a group with all the drum tracks. Um, And this song specifically, musically, is a very driving song. We want to make sure that those kick drum hits are really locked in and really create a solid sense of rhythm. Um, but I also want to make sure that it does retain the feel of a live performance. Um, so I could use Beat Detective and be able to go in and chop up every individual track and then snap it to the grid, maybe adjust the strength a little bit. But I want to have a little more control than that. And Elastic Audio gives me that. So what I want to do is basically, um, base, it's called promoting um, ticks. And I'm going to go through each of these, these um, clips you'll see in Elastic Audio and decide which ones I want emphasis to be snapped to the grid and which ones maybe just to leave alone. So we're going to learn how to do that. Um, so first thing we're going to do is I want to be able to look at the grid of the actual beats of the song, not the time. If you notice the counter up here at the top is set to the time. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that back to bars and beats and switch the grid to, we'll start with eighth notes and kind of see how that goes. And we'll switch the nudge to eighth notes. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this part of the song. Um, again, I recommend the same thing of only working on chunks instead of trying to edit the entire song all at once. So if you see, we have the drum tracks here. They're sort of split out into different sections of the song that are different takes, um, but that allows us to edit those separately without uh, making huge changes downstream in the, in the rest of the song. So um, we're going to do a little more than here than we did last time. We've got kick, snare, hi-hat, um, <coughs> or I'm sorry, hi-tom, hi low-tom and overheads. Um, so we're going to go ahead and listen to this again just real quick. And Again, I want to have all these tracks grouped so that I'm editing them all at once. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this region of time and I'm going to turn on Elastic Audio. So first switch to ticks, remember? And the next thing is to switch to polyphonic mode. Um, now what's going to happen is it's going to read each of those files, which it's done, and I'm going to grab waveform and go up to warp. And if you see now, it's gone through and selected a whole bunch of different tracks. But the thing about drums especially is there's bleed from other instruments, so it's not going to be perfect. Um, if I went in and tried to quantize this, I might have varying results as far as how accurate it would be with each of those. Um, so there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, what I'm going to try to do is only promote the kick drum hits first. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer and I'm going to hold down the shift key. And if you see the shift key, whenever I click on a specific region, it is going to, or a specific hit, it is going to highlight just that hit. Now, if you notice, it's also selecting all the other tracks around it. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is turn off the, gr um, the drum group and only focus on this track here because I just want to isolate these tracks specifically. Um, so if I select shift, it holds down the whole region between each of those notes. If I hold down control, I can promote individual kick hits right here. You have to be kind of careful because you can actually move some of those kick hits a little bit. I'm just going to go through and select all the kick drums, and these are going to be the focus of um, what the Elastic Audio is going to look at when it starts to quantize.
again, you can see I missed one there, so you gotta kinda be careful. Um, and you know, a lot of people might say, well, why would you go through and do all this work, specifically if you're only, um, if you could just go ahead and click quantize and then you'll fix them. Um, but again, I would remind that you have to go through and make sure that quantize didn't screw up any of the beats while you were doing this. So doing it in advance just saves you time in the end. And it gives you more control to say the rest of the fills in between each of the kick drum hits, I wanna have a little more natural, um, which I'm gonna show you in a sec, kind of some of the performance that he has that he does um, with the hi-hat specifically in between each of the kick drum hits is pretty um, detailed and I wanna retain some of that sort of like natural feel instead of trying to grid that out and, and taking away some of the, the live element. Again, this is a little bit of a longer section that we're doing here. Zach, yeah. um, I know you're going to cover the, the polyphonic and the rhythmic, the different algorithms that it uses. For sure. Um, why are you on polyphonic for drums now? I would have thought to be on rhythmic. That's Does a great question. So I can actually show you what we'll do is we'll do both um, the warping with polyphonic mode and the warping with... Um, with uh, with rhythmic mode so you can hear. Because you can actually, this is a good example, you can actually hear the difference in the performance um, and how it changes um, based on each of that. So what I'm gonna do here too is just select a smaller region of time. Um, well, we'll start with this. So if you see what I've done is I've gone through and I've basically promoted all the kick drum hits that that's what I wanna focus on. Um, now I'm going to go up to event and click quantize um, and I'm only going to click eighth notes because I want them to only focus on these. So I'm going to hit apply. So if you hear those little hi-hat trills that he does, I want to retain some of the feel of that and as he gets more and more into the performance they become more and more common. now is taking all those kick drum hits and snap those to the grid. So the downbeats are really solid, but the rest of the performance in between each of those eighth notes has a little more fluidity and it feels a little more human. So that was with the polyphonic mode. Let's go ahead and try to undo that really quick. And I'll switch back to rhythmic mode and you can kind of hear the difference. Especially if we pull out the kick and snare, see if you can kind of hear. Like right there, if you could hear, th th there's a little bit of an artifact left right as that cymbal crash gets loud. Versus if you do it in polyphonic mode. It's a whole lot cleaner. I don't know if you can hear that. Some of those little tiny details, I just noticed that the polyphonic mode has less artifacts than the rhythmic mode, which is why I always try to use polyphonic whenever I can. Um, if it's just like the shells of drums, and I know it's really specific, and I'm just locking them in to a grid really quick, sometimes I'll use rhythmic mode, but it's usually safer just to use polyphonic because I feel like there's less artifacts that get introduced. 